Hello again, it's uh, the Ohio Ram Show coming to you from Southwest Ohio with another episode that we have done during the race itself. This time, our stories are coming from Time Station 42 at Blanchester, Ohio, which is so skillfully and uh, wonderfully manned and staffed by uh, John and Amy McFadden with help from Bob Griffith and some other people who are always around there. And we were able to catch several of the racers, uh, some of the fans, and we'll be showing them to you as the show goes on. Hello, my name is Lee Kreider. I host this show. Spent the night last night at uh, Time Station 42. And I was asleep in my car. And I think the largest thunderclap and bolt of lightning, actually in the other order, the lightning comes before the thunder, that I've ever heard. I was uh, sleeping in the car in my van and it actually rocked the car when the thunder went off. So we've had a, quite a stormy time uh, while we were there. Typical June weather for Ohio. We welcome all the Ram Riders with a little bit of fireworks here in Ohio and, and we had them certainly had them yesterday. As I said at the end of last, the last show, uh, we're not officially related to the race across America. We're totally independent. And we have, uh, we, our views are not those of the race across America necessarily. And we have a, a special guest on here tonight. Uh, we'll talk, we'll see him later, Danny Chu. You know, some some people you interview, you just have to kind of drag the answers out of them and you'll get a, a yes or a no. All you have to do is just turn Danny loose and he starts to uh, starts to talk. He, he's a, a wealth of facts and figures and information on the history of the race across America, himself being a two time winner. And <clears throat> so we. We got Danny in there. There's only one Danny, too, and we were glad to have him as well. And we have some other important people there, too, so you'll see them as we go along. Enjoy this evening's show. Well, this is Time Station 42, and this is the Ohio Ram Show. It's noisy, and it's wet, and we have wall-to-wall -wall RVs and support vehicles here. That's uh, Guido Lure there from Germany, right there. Next to him is uh, Joe Ball from Ireland. A couple of other support vehicles around here. Over here is the Matthews Foundation vehicle. We're here with Joe Barr from Ireland. How you doing, Joe? Hi, Lee. How are you? Good to see you again. Good, thank you. Now this time face to face. Yeah, and I brought the rain with me from Ireland as well. So what child are you riding for today? We're just looking at the book. I don't uh, actually I'll know. Give you I'll just, just tell you here now. Uh, today is Alex G. Alex G. Alex G. Where is he? Alex G is a small guy. He's from small guy. Virginia. They're all over the country, Lee, so we have to keep notes and While you're doing that, we'll look around here. Uh, who are you? My name's Damien. Okay. And down here is the driver. Well, uh, driver, mechanic, uh, navigator, uh, chef, uh, an irritator of the lovely lady. Last week, come across. She came last week. Only range twice last week. <laughs> <laughs> once for three days. Yeah, <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> one for three days and one for four. So you're gonna wait the rain out a little bit, Joe, or are you gonna just fire on? Well, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna ride in it when it was going like ten minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. But you know, we'll see now like if it clears away now it's a, it's not so dangerous like it was dangerous. Especially yeah, it was. We had a lot of lightning. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it wasn't for <clears> me. And we had rode we had rode hard today to try and get some time, and uh, we'd moved up to third in the classification in the in the category. So 
I didn't want to lose all that advantage that we had broke so hard yeah. for them, yeah. like so. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we're going to see, hopefully in another hour or two it should clear away, like so I'm going to do some sleep now. Yeah, so. well we'll be watching, see what happens here. Yeah, yeah. It's been really hot, like right up. today was really hot on the way in here. I see Guido's right next door, I had him on the show as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I caught him on the road today. Um, and then just coming maybe 10 miles from the finish, I had to, I had to pull over because it was just too hot for me. And then he went past again, like so we were together on the road today. Uh, he's strong, he's going strong. Uh, for sure. Thanks a lot, Joe. Okay, Lee. Okay, John, let's, let's see the bell. <laughs> Shake it! <laughs> okay, I'm here with uh, you. Know, you've heard there's international celebrities uh, involved in Ram this year. Well, here are two of them. I guess he's not taking a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> this video. <laughs> Cassie Schumacher. We were waiting for a snap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who the last time I, I, I interviewed, I forgot to turn the mic on. These things happen. <laughs> <laughs> they happen often with me. It's called amateur. And Shauna Hogan, who uh, whose records are massive, six-time winner of Ram. Is that right? That's right. Transcontinental record yeah. holder. Transcontinental record holder. And a bunch uh, of other stuff. <laughs> mile track? Mile track? Did, did no, you, it's a 24-hour tw track. 24-hour track, yeah. yeah. So, sorry. And we're sure glad to have the, the women well represented this year. We're just talking. They're putting on quite a show for us, Cassie. Yeah, it's a great women's field this year. And it's close. It's a close race, which makes it exciting. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, hear that uh, she uh, fell? I didn't hear she fell. I, I I saw she DNF, but I didn't know why. Yeah, yeah. she fell. She broke yeah. her clavicle. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, I thought you knew no, that. No, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, yeah. darn. Yeah. Darn so, it. Well, I'm glad we had, uh, you know, I've heard all about these uh, internationally famous women on the Ram, and i got them right here in front of me. That's right. <laughs> no, none better. We're the real athletes here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks so much. Lee. This is uh, Team Michael Masters. Oh. 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 This is the Team... Uh, Matthew uh, Foundation doing a transition apparently, changing squads. Looking good, looking good. Well, at long last, I meet Stephen Beverling face to face from Australia. Hi, and I'm very, very glad to be here in Blanchester, Ohio, which is part of the time stations that you guys operate so well and we were welcomed by one of your younger um, time station people um, and it just put a big smile on our face thank you well you had quite a challenge getting here haven't you we've been very very um, we did have a very tumultuous week before we started where one of our team members Philippe May suddenly learned that he needed to get a operation with a defibrillator implant and he got that on the Saturday, the start of the race. Now, the fortunate bit is, of course, that he got it before the race rather than afterwards. It was nevertheless a very, very big surprise for everybody. And it was very upsetting for him and our crew chief, Tracy May, who is his wife. Well, I don't know how many times you've been on the show, Stephen, but uh, we always appreciate having you. Always have something else to say. Will you introduce your teammate here? My One of my team members is Claude <laughs> I'm sorry, Claude Alain Gaillon, he comes from Switzerland and he's part of the Twisted Swisters, so you can see that with us here. Yeah. Uh, and it's terrific that we're part of that team together. Second. <laughs> it's you. And uh, you were on the show with us, weren't you? That one time. Yeah, the first time yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a nice, an amazing uh, travel until here. I guess it's not finished. And um, we are not... Um, I'm, I'm quite happy it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's a surprise, um, because it was quite warm for me the last uh, two days. So we are mountain uh, men and we, we are yeah. we, we like that. Well, I do have a question of Stephen. Have you had a chance to try out your rain suit? 
I'm about to try out my rain suit. We have this joke, Lee and I, that I bought this Gore-Tex rain gear about now 18 months ago. And you can watch me take this the tag off. I will do minutes. that. This will be so. uh, this will be remarkable because the rain suit has been a subject of discussion <laughs> That's right. again and again. In Sydney, I just don't really need it, so it'll be a new event. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. And Stephen, so glad to see you here. And, and likewise, Lee, and please thank all your Ohio Ram team. There's again, a lot of people do this. A lot of people thank do you. this. Yeah, yeah we thanks cannot lot, do Steve. it without you guys. Label on them there, and I am going to get to wear them at some stage, but obviously I'm never going to wear them in Sydney. <laughs> 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 Hi, Shannon. Hey. Stephen and his rain suit. You too. Uh, Great. So I will wear them at one point, uh, but it, not quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Wonderful. So yeah. unfortunately, well fortunately, in Blanchester, Ohio, whilst it's wet, it's so warm. Eight different Ram victories right here, Lee. Get the photo between these three people. Eight different victories. I, I'm doing that. I'm, Eight. Doing, I'm doing some video here. And I was going to say... Uh, Eight total victories. Uh, Danny, yes. uh, glad to see you get in here. And there's been a lot of talk about royalty on this oh, right. on this uh, race. This is Ram royalty I'm looking at right, right now. The how real many, deal. How many victories? Yeah, the <laughs> real deal. There so you are. One, so, one, six, I'm, and two, one, five, and two. Eight. Six. Six. Oh. Wait. Oh, yeah, one, six, and two. <laughs> Come on. Nine. No, it's one, six, and one. So, just so we know, <laughs> we got Cassie Schumacher, Shauna Hogan, and Danny at the Blanchester Time Station. Yeah, and we'll um, we'll talk to you a little bit later in more All detail, right. Danny. Okay, yeah. thanks, guys. All right, let's introduce ourselves. You are always oh, videoing. Uh -oh. Uh oh, I'm Ann Whitus. <laughs> and what's your role in the crew? I'm the uh, trainer slash physical therapist. Okay. And we have to say, this is Janice Schufelt's crew, and you That's are? That's true. I'm Peter Apathy. I'm the assistant crew chief. And you? I'm Stacey Birkasad. I'm the cook and RV mom. <laughs> and you? I'm Terry Ward. I drive and take care of the bikes. I should ask, are you, are you, are you all from Alaska? I am. We are. Yeah. All from Alaska. Right. You count. Yeah. She moved recently. But she moved? Okay. I moved to Arizona. And we're expecting Janice here in 40 Very minutes shortly. or so? That's right. Okay. Oh, well, we'll be looking for her. Fabulous. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, we're looking here at Janice Schufelt. She is the leading woman rider, number one among the women, from Juneau, Alaska. Hey, Hey! Welcome to Tire Station 42, Jarris. Thanks for the best part. Yeah. Yeah. Over there on the end of the table for you. That way? Yeah. And Lee is here. Lee's, Lee's with the one, the one with the big camera. The Hi, Jan. Light. I got the blinding light, Janice. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? How you doing? Okay? Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good. A few days ago. You had us worried there for a little bit, Janice. Yeah, yeah me too. So, we were just, we weren't really sure what was going to happen after being in the hospital and everything. But luckily it all worked out. Yep. Yeah. Well, as they say with that, it's time and liquids and, yep. Yeah, yeah, the doctor made us. He said, you can't start until noon tomorrow. Restart was his orders. Yeah. yeah. So, gave it some time, and I had to ride really slow for a couple days. Yeah, yeah. I was recovering. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you for your efforts. What's your name? That's John McFadden. Oh, John McFadden, yes. Oh, yeah. Bob yeah. Griffith. Very nice to meet you. Bob Take that. Great. Griffith? Yeah. Griffith. Yes. Very nice, very nice to, meet, nice to you. meet you. It's really awesome. Everything that... Uh, 
people in Ohio do for Ram. Yeah, yeah you're yeah, We really appreciate the signs. Yeah, They're like, fantastic. Yeah, it's a little yeah, bit different than Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> Did he do yeah, that? Yeah, we don't have anything to throw like at you. Yeah, 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 yeah oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we prefer yeah, not getting run over, not getting mm -hmm. thrown. Things, or, yeah. <laughs> But I've always heard that the time stations are pretty good there. Yeah. There's some good but, ones. Yeah, there are yeah, a couple yeah. of good ones there. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. The I mean, they can't compete with you guys. But. Like, I just, we were here at 4 a.m. last year, which was your relay. Yeah. I distinctly remember the you coffee. You and Joel. Yeah. 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 Oh, the coffee. Yeah. Well, they had fresh coffee ready to go at 4 a.m. This is way yeah. awesome. Thanks again. so much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Sam, we have your smoothie. Yeah, you guys in the morning. Okay, you guys need any coaches? Oh, no, no. Remember about the pizza party. Remember that. Good job. Oh, thanks for the ride in. Yeah, absolutely. Nice to meet you in person. Yeah. All right. Wish you the best of luck. Keep it up, Thank you're doing you. great. Yeah, I got to meet your brother, he's a great guy. <laughs> yeah, we have all sorts of family here. Yeah, yeah, you got your family. Yeah. Look yeah. up there, take care of yourself. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Hey, And we yes. saw we saw a team rider way, way off, off out there. Yeah. <laughs> and we were like, oh man. <laughs> we knew we were off and we saw him, we thought, oh my gosh. At one point we turned around and then to be turned around, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a sign and it's got an arrow pointing that way. And I was like, how, did, like, we how did we it? miss that sign? <laughs> Had two but it was arrows raining. On. Yeah. Yeah. I know the sign you mean. Yeah, you probably set it out there. <laughs> Not me, but uh, <coughs> and just for the record we got Johnny and Dex took here, and your name oh, again? Katie Bob. Yeah, yeah. And of course, there's old John McFadden. We all know him. <laughs> well, welcome to Volanchester. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. We're going to send somebody else in It don't matter who it is. We think this is Joan Deitchman. We think that's who it is. Welcome to Blanchester, Joan. Okay, we're here with the Million Mile Man, Danny Chu from Pittsburgh. Uh, how'd you get here, Danny? Well, when you're riding a million miles, you want to be on a bicycle as much as possible. So it was about a 300 mile two day ride from Pittsburgh. And that's why people haven't heard me. That's why I haven't been doing any Facebook messages. I had to take care of myself and my million mile goal a bit. So I'm here. I've been here since yesterday. And yesterday I rode with six different solo riders beside them briefly and two teams. And even talked with one of the media people. And um, tell me a little bit about your RAM record. Well, uh, I've done eight consecutive RAMs from 1994, all of them solo, to 2001. And my, I had two wins, three second places, one third and two fourths. Uh, basically, after my eighth one, I couldn't afford to do it anymore, so I quit. And then in 2008, I had uh, a herniated disc for my lower back. So once I had that, that pretty much ended my ultra cycling racing because I have my bike set up where I sit real high on the handlebars, so you catch a lot of wind. And besides, because I'm older, 51, I'm slower and weaker now. People ask me why I don't do RAM again. The answer is pretty simple. I'm 20% slower, so uh, when I used to do RAM, I won in 8 days, 7 hours. Now I'd be having a tough time to get under 12 days. So I'd be comparing myself to the old me, and it would just be a, a very uh, tough way to go, you know. So I'll, I will pro most likely never race RAM again, but I still ride about eighteen to 20,000 miles a year. Let it be a lot slower, so I, I intend to have my million miles before age 70. Well, you mentioned uh, that you didn't have the money to do it, and I'm hearing a lot of people saying that the cost is getting to the place where a lot of people uh, oh. I can't do it. Well, the deal is to do it on a budget to win is obviously a lot more expensive than just to finish it, all right? If you're doing it on a budget to win, you need at least two vehicles the follow vehicle in an RV, my biggest expense was renting that RV. If I knew I was going to do eight in a row, I would have probably bought the RV and sold it. Because, you know, RV rentals back then, you put there's probably $7,000 times eight, it's 50 grand uh, for the RV rentals over my eight years. But 
you know, I kept thinking, you know, that was going to be my last one, so I kept renting each year. But that's on a, a budget to, to win the race. You can do it, I, I've seen people do it with just two minivans, where they sleep in the van, you keep your costs way down, but you're not going to win it with, with that kind of equipment. Yeah. And your European riders, the airfares are getting to be a major issue. The airfare probably makes it like twice as expensive for Europeans. Maybe forty thousand for uh, to do it on a budget to, to have a chance to win for Americans, but could be eighty thousand for Europeans. Yeah, yeah. but uh, guys like Strausser has a huge advantage, though. The winner this year, uh, Christoph Strausser, he's basically a professional rider because he gets enough money to train full time. That gives him a huge advantage over the other solo riders that have to, you know, train around their work schedule, obviously. I mean, I heard that Strausser was, he, he probably was in the desert for a whole month to get acclimated first so that heat didn't bother him. Yeah. You know, other people just can't afford to do that. Well, yeah, and I think that's becoming a big issue. Uh, well, give me a little reflection on this year's race. What do, you, what do you see? What are you thinking about? Okay, I was amazed that Strausser went out. I figured he was the hands-on favorite to win, right? And, uh, but he went out, you know, way faster than it's ever been done in the history of the race. He posted 510 miles for the first 24 hours, just an amazing first day. And then the second day, he still did 440. So he had 950 miles, almost a third of the race in the first two days. And uh, from a, a fan viewpoint, when he, he won probably by about a day and a half. That's the biggest winning margin ever, ever. And from a fan viewpoint, it makes it a boring race because you know who the winner is, all right? You know, back when I won, my, I like to hang back and take the lead like with 200 miles to go. So from a fan viewpoint, my wins were more exciting, I would like to think, all right? But to each his own, everybody has their different style. Strausser basically has did it the Robic style. Robic liked to go out so hard, he'd get at least a five hour margin. That allows him to, even after a sleep break, to still be ahead of the second place guy. That's a nice buffer to have. I never did it that way. Uh, so at the halfway point, I think Strausser's average speed was still an amazing 18.5 miles an hour at the halfway point in Pratt, Kansas. And I predicted it would drop by about 2 miles an hour, which I think it did, uh, close to 16 and a half at the end. But still, that's the first time anybody's ever gone over 16, so an amazing achievement for him. Yeah. Okay, well, you're always full of information when it comes to the Ram, and uh, you're the guy to go to. And thanks uh, for giving me some time, uh, Danny. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 410. I believe this is the Aussie. Hey! All right. Oh my goodness. I forgot that you're a team. I'm thinking you're going to be riding again, you know, because I'm just looking at Yeah, Marie's riding in. We're going to transition here. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Hi, how are you how again? Are you? Good, nice good. to it's see you. Good to see you. You doing good? Yeah. All yeah. right. Good, good. Great. Great job. Hey, how are you? Good. I've been looking forward to seeing you guys for a long time. Good. Good. So. Then it seemed longer and longer. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. How many minutes are your poles now? Seven, or no, seven miles, 20 minutes. All right. Yeah. And your, your shift is on for another four hours or what? Um, we're going through the next time station unless we're here differently. All right. Yeah. Yep, yep. So it's pretty exciting. I want to introduce you to Ryan. She's our crew Hi. member. She's awesome. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Where are you from? Huh? Are you from Pittsburgh? I'm from the Philly area, but I live in Pittsburgh now. Okay. Work there. What do you so. th have you ever been involved in Ram before? Never. What, what do you think? I like it. It's fun. <laughs> We're all gonna be tired by the end, but it's a lot of fun. Are, oh, are you? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's been very motivating. We're going to try and reel them in today. We'll, well if you're not today, you have the Appalachian Hills. Evan says you guys climb better, so that's where you'll get them. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we just got to keep them within reach, I think. But uh, they pulled out of here not too, not too 843 long. 8.43 they went through. Here, here's our girl, Team Phenomenal Hope, Anna Marie. Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. Hi, Go, Anna. Anna. Woo! Win there, Danny. Well, that's the wrap up for the race across America for me this year. Of course, the race isn't over yet. I'll be following closely on the various resources we have. And I'm going to put a few uh, links to those resources on the show notes for this show. Show number 53, is it? Yeah, I believe so. Wow. Been doing this about two years and uh, 
and I think this is the 53rd show, counting those that exist, a few of them got evaporated uh, in the early days when Google Plus was just starting to initiate this service. It's been a real joy to uh, spend the time I did this evening and or yesterday evening and this early this morning at uh, Blanchester. They do such a good job there. And uh, we, we were there at a time when an awful lot of racers were coming through and an awful lot of people were coming through. And that's a good time to visit our time stations. There are times when early on in the race and then later when, when the, the early racers are just kind of starting to dribble through. And then toward the end, uh, it gets uh, thin again. But there's that meaty section where there's just people coming through every few minutes, sometimes more than one at a time. <clears throat> and that was the case uh, yesterday and early this morning. The nice thing was to meet so many people who had seen the show. I, I, I appreciate it when they say, I watch your show. I watch your show. Because there are times uh, when I look at the stats of how many hits I get, how many views I get, I don't think they're accurate. And I am convinced of that after meeting so many of you there at Blanchester. I think I have a lot more viewers maybe than what I thought I had. At least I've got a lot more supporters than I thought I had, and I appreciate that. There are some times uh, when I wake up at night and uh, maybe I've had a little struggle trying to get a show together or something. And I think, oh, why do I keep on doing this? And it's support like that that really makes me feel good and want to do it. And it's so nice to meet a lot of people face to face that I've had on the show. Uh, I think of Stephen Beverling, and Shauna Hogan, and some other people I had never seen face to face before. And it was so nice to to be able to see them and, and, and get acquainted with them personally. Your support is always appreciated. If you like the show, I would appreciate it. If you see my posts on Facebook, give me a like there or maybe share it. Uh, those things always uh, increase the number of viewers that you get. On Google+, Plus, you give a plus one or share there. That's also helpful as well. And there's somebody pinging me uh, with a message. I'll get to them in a moment. That's very much appreciated. If you have comments about the show, uh, just go to the OhioRamShow.com website. You'll see a place on the right-hand side there where you can make uh, comments. I'd appreciate it. And um, I find I kind of seem to ask the same set of questions every time. And I'd like to hear from you what you think uh, you'd like to know about uh, these people. Tell me. Uh, I'm always ready to try to change or improve things. Now, as for the future of the show, well, uh, we're going to be taking a little hiatus here, try to recover from uh, all the activity and catch a little breather. Uh, we may do some different things. I have talked about a show on uh, bicycle safety. Uh, it's been a big, big issue. Uh, we're working with a couple people to do something like that. And, and some other issues that are not related, immediately related to uh, RAM or ultra cycling. And we will be working on some things like that. And then um, there's next year. And we're already thinking about how we can uh, uh, improve the show and work on some things with, with the future. Speaking of safety, uh, we've had several mishaps on the race. Oh, we always have some. Um, and uh, just after I got home and had a little nap here, I found out that um, Corinne Fuhrer from Switzerland uh, was taken out of the race. Fortunately, she's okay, just bunged up. But uh, a semi hit her follow car, and that, uh, that um, propelled the follow car into Corinne and knocked her down. And... And she's out of the race now. She's in a two-person mixed team, her father being the other person, Ben Fuhrer. And he's going on. Uh, you may know Ben. He rides with just one arm. And when last I looked, I, I think they had made it to our time station at Oxford. But we wish Ben the best as he carries on for the both of them. And I'm sure he's going to have a lot of rooters out there as he... Uh, 
as he moves on through West Virginia and uh, on to the finish. Ben, good luck. And Corinne, you heal well. Shu Pillinger, who broke her clavicle, uh, we hope that you heal up, and we'd like to see you back here to become that elusive first woman finisher of the race uh, from the United Kingdom who to finish the race across America. Thanks again for all of you for watching. We appreciate every one of you. We appreciate your support. Thank you for all those who took time out to to uh, talk with me, both during the race and these last couple shows, but during the year when you made time in your very busy schedules to be a part of this show. If it weren't for you, there'd be no show. And we will be seeing you again. Well, just keep tuned uh, to HighRamShow.com or our uh, our social media, and we'll be in touch. See you before too long, and goodbye.